Jaja children, uno all right? This is Lily of the Valley, bringing you greeting in the name of Jehovah, our Creator, and Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And today is the first day of the week, sometime in 2017, in the month of August. Don't know the exact date, but you get the point. This is Camperdown High School, and that's my school. And that's one of the plaids we wear. Now, while we're going to do the plaids today, we're going to identify the dress code of the children of Israel. So the pants, you see the boys are dressed different from the girls with the pants and the shirt. The girls wear dresses and blouses. Okay, in sixth form, we wear skirt, blouse with tie. But we're going to show where the dress code comes from. And you'll see that throughout all the children of Israel scattered throughout the Caribbean. Even some in the African continent still have their own different types of plaids because the plaids really came from the fact that most Jamaicans are British. We just got independence in 1962. Before that, we were the children of Israel ruling Europe, Africa, the world. That's what the British Empire is about. Our father is Jacob. When we had to flee Scotland, Ireland, England, Wales into the Americas, we were fleeing religious persecution. So our clothing styles went with us. We had to leave our castles, our governments, our lands behind and come into new lands to worship God in spirit and in truth. Even Jacob's stone, our father's stone, is still in Scotland to this day. The Edomites have it. So when we left Europe and when we left Jerusalem, we left with a dress code. So we're going to look at the dress code. It talks about... Um, the clothing or dress and I'm gonna use um, Nelson's Bible dictionary so dress this subject includes the following particulars one materials two color and decoration three name form and mode of wearing the various articles special uses relating thereto. materials after the first apron or fig leaves Genesis 3 verse 7 the skins of animals were used for clothing, Genesis 3 verse 21, such as the mantle worn by Elijah. Palaces of sheepskin still form an ordinary article of dress in the East. The art of weaving hair was known to the Hebrews at an early period, Exodus 25 verse 4, 26 verse 7, and wool was known earlier still, Genesis 38 verse 12. Notice we wear something called marina. The marina is something from the wool. That's something the men wear. So when we're garment, we're buying it 100% wool, 100% cotton, 100% linen, 100% leather, or 100% silk, or 100% of whatever material it is. So we don't wear mixed fabrics, just like the Bible says. I'm, at least I don't. I try to buy my clothes genuine and for my children too. There are acquaintance with linen and perhaps cotton dates from the captivity in Egypt. First Chronicles 4 verse 21. Silk was introduced much, much later. Revelation 18 verse 12. The use of mixed materials such as wool and flax was forbidden. Leviticus 19 verse 19. Deuteronomy 22 verse 11. Color and decoration. So, um... The prevailing color of the Hebrew dress was the natural white of the materials employed, which might be brought to a high state of brilliancy by the art of the fuller. So now you see why we have fullers as last names, okay? So that's some of the, the names that we have. Tells you, sorry about that, tells you where... We come from and the jobs that we did. So some people say when Solomon says he's black and ruddy, I'm sorry, that is um, white and ruddy. The ruddy here signifies the white of the garment, just like it says here. The prevailing color of the Hebrew dress was the natural white color of the materials employed, which might be bought at a high state of brilliancy by the art of the fuller. In Jamaica, we get it even whiter with a thing called the blue dye you know when you walk blue the water then you put the white in it and it make it even whiter also we come from the blue mountains so and the most I said to put a ribbon of blue around the garments including the 
um, the fringes. Okay. So Mark nine verse three, the notice of scarlet thread. Genesis three verse eight, verse twenty eight implies some acquaintance with dyeing, and you know dyer is a popular last name too of the Hebrews. So you have the fullers and you have the dyers. Yeah. The elements of Orna. I'm sorry. The elements of ornamentation were one weaving with threads previously dyed. Exodus 35 verse 25 to the introduction of gold thread or wire. Exodus 27 verse 6. The addition of figures, robes decorated with gold, Psalm 45 13 and with silver thread. Acts 12, 21 were worn by royal personages. Other kinds of embroidered robes were worn by the wealthy. Judges 5, verse 30, Psalm 45, verse 14, Ezekiel 16, verse 13, as well as purple. Proverbs 31, verse 22, Luke 16, verse 19, and scarlet. 1 Samuel 1, verse 24. The names and... Forms and modes of wearing the robes, the general characteristics of oriental dress have pres preserved a remarkable uniformity in all ages. The modern Arab dress is much as the ancient Hebrew did. Well, they, based on when they were writing this, because they best dress based now on what the West does, but the breeches or the shorts... Those were male garments, and most men in the world wear the pants now, the shorts, or the breeches, or the trousers, as they call it, and jackets and shirts. But women wear skirts, dresses, blouse, and so on. Okay? So the costume of the men and women were very similar. There was sufficient difference, however, to mark the sex, as it was strictly forbidden a woman to wear the appendages such as the staff, signet ring, and other ornaments of a man, as well as to a man to wear the outer robe of a woman. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. We should first describe the robes which were common to the two sexes, and then those which were peculiar to women so now you know women dress different from men when they look at you you should know if it's a woman or a man and you see how many sexes god made two so this is page 150 nelson bible dictionary it was closely fitting garment resembling in the form and use our shirt though uniform unfortunately translated coat in the authorized version the material of which it was made was either wool, cotton, or linen. It was without sleeves and reached only to the knee. Did you see this now? That's something like what the inner garment looked like. Without sleeves, reaching to the knee, and then they have the blouse underneath it. Okay? So that's just basic, and it can be longer. Sometimes you'll see longer versions going down to the ankle as well but not for school. Okay. A purse. Okay. Let's see. Another can reach to the wrists and ankles. It was in either case kept close to the body by a girdle and the fold formed by the overlapping of the robe served as an inner pocket. You see the girdle or the belt around the same thing. That's where that style comes from, okay? I don't know if you can see the belt, but we call it belt, but the Bible calls it girdle around the waist, okay? So, a person wearing the inner garment alone was described as naked. There was an upper or second tunic, the difference being that it was longer than the first. And we also call our uniforms tunics, okay?
The linen cloth appears to have been a wrapper of fine linen which might be used in various ways, but especially as the, a nightshirt. Mark 14 verse 51. The outer garment consisted of a quadrangle or piece of woolen cloth probably resembling in shape a scotch plaid. So the scotch plaid, we're going to look at that. The same thing as the Scotland plaids because the children of Israel were in Scotland. They ruled Scotland, England, Ireland, Wales, United Kingdom. So that's where a lot of the plaids that we wear in school and in the Caribbean comes from because it's part of the dress code from the days of old. Okay. So these are some of the scotch plaids we're going to look at. And that's one, another type. Each island has its own plaid. Even 